Hello, everybody, and once again, welcome to Oaklawn Today. Track announcer Pete Aiello joined by Nancy Holthus, getting ready to take you through the Sunday card of racing from Hot Springs, day two of the Racing Festival of the South, with sprinters taking center stage in the Count Fleet. That's right. Allsbid, last year's winner, returns, but he takes on top contender, Subtle Indian, from the barn of Robertino Diodoro. Subtle Indian with the inside draw in race number eight, the feature race, the Count Fleet. But for now, let's get you caught up on the track and weather conditions. We start this Sunday program with beautiful conditions for horse racing, temperatures in the low 70s, and a fast track. The sun is shining. First race of the afternoon at a mile on the 16th for $20,000 claimers. Scratch the two, Al Shuja, a field of six went postward. Favorites included five, Key to the Bridge, and seven, Bellamy Run. In line. Racing at Oaklawn. From the center, Old Mountain Lane wins the start and goes looking for the lead. Key to the bridge is up the challenge and up on the outside, Bellamy Run makes it three across the track. Rippin' Ranger comes away racing in fourth in front of Conquest Caliente and Wagner will have to pass them all as they run into the first turn. Now with the lead, it's Old Mountain Lane, three parts of length, key to the bridge between horses, second, widest of all, Bellamy run a joint third. Riding the rail from fourth is Rippin' Ranger, then it's back to Conquest Caliente and two to the trailer, Wagner. Separated by five lengths as they start their journey down the backstretch after the opening quarter went in 24 and one. On top, the leader Old Mountain Lane, three parts of length, key to the bridge is still second. Bellamy Run is still third, while three wide. From fourth and not asked for much now is Rippin' Ranger with Conquest Caliente between horses. And being asked to quicken but not doing it yet, the trailer is Wagner. They go to the half mile pole and still the leader Old Mountain Lane, still second key to the bridge. They've been that way since they sprung it and they went 48 and one for the opening half mile. Bellamy Run has been three wide on both turns but continues to progress with Conquest Caliente, then Rippin' Ranger and Wagner. Around the far turn they go, three horses still across the track and it's the same three from the outset. Three wide, Bellamy Road from between them, key to the bridge. Old Mountain Lane is now on the inside and trying to fight on. Four wide coming off cover now. Here's Conquest Caliente running on as they run to the top of the stretch. Three quarters, 113 flat, they turn for home. Old Mountain Lane and on the outside, Bellamy Run takes a shot at him. Conquest Caliente set down driving and Wagner from last continues to chip away. Still many chances, Old Mountain Lane with the lead. Conquest Caliente Caliente going up on the outside. Conquest Caliente now collars the leader at the 16th pole, and it's Kim Poole and Walter Delacruz. It's Conquest Caliente to win it. Second Old Mountain Lane close for third, either Wagner or Bellamy Run in 145 and four. Three horses went at it from the bell to the three-quarter pole, but it set it up for a closer from off the speed. That was six, Conquest Caliente, who gets the victory under jockey Walter Delacruz for owner Jack Boggs and trainer Kim Poole. Number four, Old Mountain Lane was second in front of seven, Bellamy run third, one, Wagner finished fourth. Today's second race brings out maiden claimers at six furlong, scratch number six, Night Angel, it's a field of eight, even money favorite, number three, Sun Susie. All set. And they're off. From the center, count on Claire and Sun Susie begin nicely. Butter Cookie is showing speed. Up on the outside, here's the Minnesota bred Zan Creek to show pace. And America's Star moves up from down toward the inside. So it's a three way go down the back stretch. Butter Cookie between horses, Sun Susie three wide. Now, Ricardo Santana Jr. wants to back America's star off the pace to race in third with Count on Claire in fourth, then Zan Creek in fifth. Moving up to the inside is the class dropper Abby in pink, then Macho Sugar, and far back to the first timer Rohan, not enjoying himself at the back. They run the round the far turn. They went 22 seconds flat for a contested opening quarter speed. And on top, Sun Susie, three parts of a length. Butter Cookie calls it an afternoon. Count on Claire is into second while working hard to make ground. Stretch of three lengths to America Star, who's racing in fourth from Abbey and Pink in fifth. And they're at the top of the stretch. Floating a bit wide is Sun Susie, right to the attack. Count on Claire, these two shoulder to shoulder with three sixteenths to go. Count on Claire on the outside. Sun Susie battles on on the inside. Final furlong, nothing giving an inch. Dela Cruz goes to work on Count on Claire. Sun Susie fights on and has more. Sun Susie now reasserts herself at the 16th pole, and Sun Susie and Kanchari will win it. Count on Claire with a good run second. America's star, a distant third, and Butter Cookie finished fourth and won 11 and three. The favorite Sun Susie was tested turning for home, but had something in reserve and kicked on to win it under jockey Alex Kanchari for owner Harold Williams and Margaret Williams of Avalon Racing. Harold Williams, the winning trainer. Second four, count on Claire. Third one, America's star, Butter Cookie, part of the pace. She ended up fourth. 
We're back now for the third race at a mile and a 16th. Claiming price here is $5,000. A field of eight went to the gate, and the race time favorite was number six, Ranger School. They're up. Ranger School and Smed both begin nicely toward the inside. Radar ZT will land third with Milty next. Moving up toward the inside, Summer Epic. He got a chirp to get forward now, and he's moved all the way up into second, and he's three lengths in front of Ranger, or rather second last is Golden Touch, and then at the back, the trailer, a long way is Golden Touch, just in front of Run and Gun and Rascal. They run around the opening turn. Ranger School has the lead. Summer Emick is part of the pace well second. Two and a half to Smed, who gets a good trip behind the speed from third. Then Radar is ET and Milty on his outside. It's a stretch of five to run and gun and rascal. Two clear feathers in the sky, and it's a distance to Golden Touch, who's not keeping touch at the moment. 24 seconds for the opening quarter time. Down the back stretch they go, and Giovanni Franco lets Ranger School roll. He leads it by three. Summer Africa offered a brief challenge, and he's now back to third as Smed moves up to be second. Radar's AT rides the rail from fourth in front of Milty and fifth at the half mile. Four in front of Run and Gun and Rascal, then Feathers in the Sky, and not being persevered with, Golden Touch is out of the race. They run around the far turn after a 47 and three half mile. Ranger School made a break for the wire. He leads it by three. Smed is second. Radar's ET is now third. Milty is fourth. These top four appear the only four in shouting range as they move to the top of the stretch. Run and gun and Rascal just ran up to take fifth, but he's better than nine lengths behind with a quarter of a mile to go. Three quarters, one twelve and three. They're at the top of the stretch. Ranger School trying to fend off the challenge of Milty on the outside and Radar's ET up the inside. Smed is just one pace from fourth through the final furlough. Long. Ranger School still has the lead. Radar ZT with the late say up the rail. Then it's Smed who's battling back between horses. But Ranger School's a winner. Ranger School and Giovanni Franco to win it gate to wire by three in the end. Milty second. Smed third. Radar ZT fourth in 146 and three. Giovanni Franco let Ranger School roll in that second quarter and they could not catch up to him in the stretch. He got the victory at odds of three to one. Owned by Charles Garvey, trained by Robertino Diodoro. Again, Giovanni Franco on board for the winning ride. Number five, Milty was second in front of seven, Smed third, three, Radar's ET, managed fourth. Don't go away, more great racing action from Oakland right after this. Want to bet? Even when you're not at the track? Now our Kansans can watch and wager online from anywhere. Introducing Oaklawn Anywhere. Visit the Oaklawn Anywhere booth to join and fund your account with cash at the window or by direct deposit. Get a $100 bonus for signing up. Go to oaklawnanywhere.com for details. Oaklawn Anywhere, now everywhere for Arkansas residents. Bathhouse Row. Oaklawn Racing. Lake Hamilton. That's just part of the history made in Hot Springs years ago. But your first big win, enjoying a meal underneath the stars, or just appreciating the view from hiking trails or botanical gardens, that's the kind of history made in Hot Springs every day. So come make yours. Visit hotsprings.org today. The beat goes on. Oh, here's the line, Trace Creek. Proves best. Over six million dollars in earnings for registered Arkansas breads. The pack and penny rocks. Rock City Roadhog Weed Beef Storm Man Photo Finish. Five one hundred thousand dollar stakes at Oaklawn. Weed Hill making short work of the competition. Five thousand dollar bonus if you're an Arkansas bred and you win an open company at Oaklawn in 2016. Be my Caroline holds on narrowly. If you like racing and you like gaming, we've got a place in the winner's circle for you. Oaklawn's Winner's Circle Player Rewards Club earns you points toward free play, prizes, and food discounts. And a $10 free play coupon with your membership. Sign up at the Winner's Circle desk in the bigger and better Oaklawn Gaming. And while you're there, check out all the new games like live and video blackjack, poker, and a high limits area. Oaklawn, Arkansas's favorite place to play. Fourth race is at six furlong. Scratch number 10, Kevil Kidd. A field of 10, nine wedgering interests went to the gate. Wide open betting board. The favorite was the eight, Gem City Gal. And they're up. 
Last in, first out, Denali Cattail. The first to begin from second early is Gem City Gal. Moving up from down toward the inside, both When We Believe and My Place Are Yours. Then moving wide on the course, but trying to improve, goes Flint Hall. In between horses, it's Let's Tango. Followed a length and a half behind by Ali's Dream, who's two better than Tinsley's district. Second last is Give Me Thy Heart, and the back marker disqualified. They whistled a quarter, 21 and one. Get serious here as they move into the far turn. On top, it's Denali Cattail by length and a half. From second and moving in while second is Gem City Gal. It's a stretch of five. My place or yours is now third, two and a half lengths in front of When We Believe in fourth. Then it's a length and a half to Flint Hall and the stable mate Alley's Dream. Moving up toward the inside is Tinsley's District. Then it's four to My Place or Yours and Disqualified. They went a half mile in 45 and one. That's more like it. As they turn for home, Gem City Gal has the lead by two and a half. Coming after a second, My Place or Yours. Back third is Denali Cattail. Moving from fourth is When We Believe. Inside the final furlong and still finding up top is Gem City Gal. Gem City Gal is eight to five and moving clear. Gem City Gal for trainer Lynn Whiting and owners Choctaw Racing to win it by two and a half. My pleasure yours was second, third one we believe, and fourth was Allie's Dream in 112 and one. It was a wicked early pace, and number eight, Gem City Gal, set off the early pace, made first run on the closers, and prevailed easily under jockey Giovanni Franco for his second winner of the afternoon. Gem City Gal races for Choctaw Racing Stable and trainer Lynn Whiting. Second, number four, my place or yours, and third was five, when we believe. Fleet Hall completes the Superfecta, worth more than $24 for a 10-cent play. Fifth race, Arkansas Bread Maiden Clamors in at the $15,000 price tag. We had a field of 11, 10 wagering interests. The betting favorite was seven, Fiasco. Walking up. And in. All set. And they're up. Endless Bloom and Storm Element both begin nicely. Moving in the center now, here's Orphan Shoes up the challenge. Up the inside goes Van's Flying Baby and Leslie's Girls not far away as they run down the backstretch. They're followed by Fiasco. Then goes the Gray Reordained, who's now mixing it up five lengths off the speed. Down to the inside, both Explosive Candy and Miss Spanna. A length and a half clear of second last running May We Prosper. And Sham Shoes has half a mile to pass them all as her stablemate Leslie's Girl goes to the far turn on top. It's Leslie's girl in front by length and a quarter from second. That's Orphan Shoes. Vans Flying Baby all dressed up with no place to go. Endless Bloom is up and around her. Then followed by Reordained. Moving in nicely from the back is Miss Spanna as they go to the top of the stretch. Still many chances here. Vans Flying Baby needs room bad. But up for the lead now is Orphan Shoes. Orphan Shoes over for Leslie's girl as they turn for home. Endless Bloom is next. Miss Spanna tipped into the clear to rally home and still no place to go for Vans Flying Baby. Although now she's working with an inside split. Through the final furlong, Endless Bloom, Miss Spanna's over the top at Orphan Shoes, and Vans Flying Baby's up the inside lane. In deep stretch, Endless Bloom's almost there. Vans Flying Baby, Endless Shoes coming on, coming to the line. Vans Flying Baby is in, ooh, maybe. Vans Flying Baby up, maybe, over number nine, Endless Bloom, and 113 and one. Number four, Vans Flying Baby looked loaded, turning for home, found room inside the final furlong, and prevails in the narrowest of margins. Owned by Superior Racing Stable and trained by Tom Howard, Jareth Loveberry was on board for the winning ride. Number nine, Endless Bloom continues to run well, just lost a heartbreaker while second from five, Orphan Shoes third. Three, Miss Spenna completes the Superfecta. Early pick four today, $88.30 for a 50-cent wager. Don't go away, more great racing action from Oaklawn right after this. I firmly believe that any man's finest hour the greatest fulfillment of all that he holds dear is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. At West Rock Coffee, we celebrate the determination and spirit of the people of Rwanda who help us make the finest coffee in the world. Cedar Run Farm on 60 acres and 17 miles from Oaklawn Park offers a 10-stall barn, grassy paddocks, day pens, and a partially covered six-craft walker for exercising and rehab. Moonshine Mullen is a first-year registered Arkansas stallion with earnings of over $1 million. Moonshine Mullen did it! And a huge upset on the Stephen Foster! Black type winner in the U.S. and Canada with wins over the dirt, turf, and synthetic now standing at Lake Hamilton Equine and registered on True Nicks. Problem. When 
cold refreshment calls. Coors Light answers. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Hi, I'm Terry Wallace, and here is tomorrow's Sentinel Record Pick of the Day. Today's sixth race for $15,000 claimers. A field of eight won a mile and a sixteenth. Race time favorite was number five, Port Aggregate. And they're up. Roman Unbridled was off a step slow. From the center, for a few dollars more, begins the best. Roman Unbridled is showing speed, and All-Star moves up on the outside. Backing off is Port Aggregate. Then it's the gray, Bubba Roan, with Malbros toward the inside. The last two horses are Alamo City and Lasting Impact as they run around the first turn. For a few dollars more, has the lead, but not for long, as Roman Unbridled now goes on with it to take the lead three parts of a length. Back to second is for a few dollars more up on the outside. Both Hall Star and Port Aggregate start to improve a bit. Then it's the trio, including Alamo City, Bubba Roan, and Malbros. And lasting impact will have to do his impacting later. He's last of all after the opening quarter went in 23 and 4. Roman Unbridled sets an even pace, leads it by a length and a half. Port Aggregate is second for a few dollars more, is racing in third now. And it's a length and a half back. Moving up is Malbros on the outside All Star, Bubba Roan between horses. Second last and six lengths behind is Alamo City, and still nothing from lasting impact. That's the eight of them as they move into the far turn. They went 47 and one for the opening half mile, and they swing into the far turn. Roman Unbridled has the lead. Port Aggregate begins to get to him a bit while second. Now working closer, Bubba Roan into third around for a few dollars more. Malbros between horses. Stretch of five to Alamo City, then comes Lasting Impact, and All Stars last to turn for home, and they're at the top of the stretch. That's all for Roman Unbridled after three quarters and one twelve and one. Port Aggregate now shaken up for the drive and leads by two. Bubba Roan is there second. Mal Bros with renewed energy on the outside, then for a few dollars more and lasting impact, but this one's over. Port Aggregate on jockey Alex Berzer will win it and win it easy. Give it to Hall of Famer JVB. Give it to Port Aggregate by six in the end. Malbro's got second at a big number. Third was Bubba Roan. It's close for fourth and 144 and three. Favorite was an easy winner in race six. It's number five, Port Aggregate rolls to victory under jockey Alex Berzer for trainer Jack Van Berg and owner Mike Waters. Second, number one, Malbro's at a big price. And third was number two, Bubba Roan. Lasting impact completes the Superfecta. Seventh race starts the 50 cent late pick four at one mile. Scratch the five and seven, a field of eight. Race time favorite was number 10, King of Spades. And king of spades. All set. And they're up. From the outside, king of spades was away well. Knight Spree is showing speed. And between horses, here's American Road moving to challenge. And Raring to Go comes away in the top flight. But as they head into that first turn, Knight Spree and American Road are the first two. Raring to go is now racing on in third and down to his inside goes Summer King, who improves a couple of spots in front of the favorite King of Spades. Then it's Nance Piercero and Be Grateful, a stretch of five to the early trailer. The trailer is Zimmerman. They went 24 seconds for the opening quarter speed. Not much pace on for this distance as they head into the back stretch. On the outside, the leader is now American Road by a head. Knight Spree right back at him second. Raring to go is racing in third. Summer King is fourth. Stretch of four. King of Spades is now racing in fifth. Two in front of Be Grateful into the inside Nance Piercero. Still nothing from Zimmerman. Half mile, 47 and two. Second quarter faster than the first, and the top two continue to go at it. American Road leads it now by a length and a quarter. Moving into second is Raring to go. Back third goes Knight Spree. Stretch of four. King of Spades starts to progress. He races now within five and a half of the lead. Be Grateful also is starting to get underway. He's within six and a half. And now dropping back is Summer King alongside Nance Piercero. And they run to the top of the stretch. American Road goes to the top of the stretch after three quarters and one twelve flat. He's five to two and he's four on top. Knight Spree and Raring to go, two long shots, second and third. King of Spades and Be Grateful are next, but this one's over. Put a ring around American Road. He's well clear. American Road for 10 strike racing and jockey Glenn Corbett, boot clear to win it easily. Six, seven, eight lengths in the end. It's going to be King of Spades up for second, Raring to go third, and Knight Spree fourth in 137 and one. Number eight, American Road makes short work of it in race number seven today, winning easily and quickly under jockey at Glenn Corbett for 10 strike racing and trainer Randy Matthews. Second was number 10, King of Spades in front of nine, raring to go third. Two, Knight Spree completes the Superfecta. 
Don't go away. More great racing action from Oaklawn right after this. Silk's Bar & Grill inside Oaklawn Gaming is Hot Springs' newest destination for great food, drink, and entertainment. Open for lunch and dinner plus a late night bar menu, Silk's was voted Arkansas Times' best new bar in Arkansas. Silk's features free live music every Friday and Saturday night, and with more than 30 big screen TVs, it's the perfect place to catch your favorite game. Be sure to try the incredible Silk's Margarita, made with Patron, and experience our signature Silk's Burger. Oaklawn, Arkansas's favorite place to play. Welcome to the atrium at Serenity Point, where your very own lakefront property awaits you. We have gourmet chef-prepared meals, stunning waterfront views, private apartments, and an active lifestyle where our residents enjoy social hour, daily exercise classes, an indoor saltwater pool and spa, summer boating, movies in our theater, and many more exciting activities. We offer luxury senior living options with independent living, assisted living, and memory care. Call today to start living your retirement dream. Bathhouse Row, Oaklawn Racing, Lake Hamilton. That's just part of the history made in Hot Springs years ago. But your first big win, enjoying a meal underneath the stars, or just appreciating the view from hiking trails or botanical gardens. That's the kind of history made in Hot Springs every day. So come make yours. Visit hotsprings.org today. Wanna bet? Even when you're not at the track? Now our Kansans can watch and wager online from anywhere. Introducing Oaklawn Anywhere. Visit the Oaklawn Anywhere booth to join and fund your account with cash at the window or by direct deposit. Get a $100 bonus for signing up. Go to oaklawnanywhere.com for details. Oaklawn Anywhere, now everywhere for Arkansas residents. Eighth race starts with a 50 cent late pick three at six furlongs. We had a field of eight in here. Race time favorite making his three-year-old debut. Number eight, Patton Proud. And they're up. Last in, first out, Patton Proud gets the first call, but Nada is quickly up the challenge, and Giant Trick comes away in the top flight. These three are quickest. Racing up from the inside is Entertainer and One Fine Dream. They're fourth and fifth, and it's a length and a half to the inside. Mud Light, followed by Moyawa, and trailing the field is Uncle Drossel. They run to the half-mile pole. Nada has the lead. Patton Proud moves to him well second. Giant Trick is outpaced third from Entertainer in fourth. And it's one try and fine dream traveling along in fifth now. Then comes back to Moyawa. He's racing five lengths off the lead and two and a half lengths clear of Mud Light. The trailer is this now the trailer is Uncle Drossel. They went 22 and one for the opening quarter and they go to the top of the stretch. On the outside, Patton Proud puts ahead in front, but here's Entertainer moving to him and the two favorites go on with it. Back third is Nada, back fourth is Giant Trick. Then Moyawa as they run to the top of the stretch. Santana still sitting chilly on Patton Proud, comes into the lane moving away. Entertainer's trying to get up for second. Giant Trick is resurgent and coming again. Then Nada through the final furlong. Patton Proud has the lead. Giant Trick coming back for more on the inside. 16th pole, Patton Proud in front. Giant Trick is game, but he's only second best to Patton Proud, who comes back a winner. Second Giant Trick, close third. Maybe Entertainer over Nada and Mud Light, 110 and 2. It's been a winning form pattern all meet long for Steve Asmussen. His horses have been ready to roll off the shelf, and this one no exception as Patton Proud gets the victory for owner Jerry Durant and trainer Steve Asmussen, Ricardo Santana Jr., on board for the winning ride. Number two, Giant Trick fought on well to be second in front of six, Entertainer, who had to settle for third. Ninth and feature race, day two of the Racing Festival of the South with the grade three Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. $400,000 in guaranteed purse money, and it was a field of nine. The race time favorite, the speedball from the rail, Subtle Indian. And they're off in the 43rd Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. From the rail, the favorite Subtle Indian breaks right on cue and goes looking for the lead. Cinco Charlie comes away racing in second with his stablemate Bayard out of there in third. Spite Song is now racing in fourth, and then from between horses goes Gentleman's Bet. Alsvid and WB Smudge travel as a team about five lengths off the lead, three clear of recount, and the California Invader Cautious Giant will have to do it from last with half a mile to go. 
The opening quarter was fast, 21 and two, and Ramon Vasquez and Subtle Indian call the shots up front with a length and a half advantage. Racing in second is Cinco Charlie from third gentleman's bet. WB Smudge, the veteran campaigner, rides the rail. In between horses, the defending champion, Alsvid, needs some place to go. Bayard is still in that vanguard, a length and a half in front of Spite Song. Recount starts to put in a run from behind, and the trailer is cautious, giant, and they turn for home. They went the opening half mile in 44 and one, and the leader is still Subtle Indian on top by two and a half. Alsvid set down, driving by Channing Hill, trying to track him down with an eighth of a mile left. WB Smudge is up the inside, but Subtle Indian is just too good. There's nothing subtle about this Indian. Subtle Indian dazzles in the Count Fleet and wins it by three. Second Alsvid, third Cinco Charlie. It's four, close for fourth between Bayard and Cautious Giant. Six furlongs in 108 and four. What is there to say about Subtle Indian other than he's awesome and he's fast? And today he proves both as he wins the Count Fleet under jockey Ramon Vasquez. Robertino Diodoro, the winning trainer, the winning owners, Mercedes Stables. And Subtle Indian stopped the teletimer in 108 and change for a very fast victory. Defending champion Alsvid ran well to be second in front of number six, Cautious Giant, who completes your superfecta. Cinco Charlie ended up third. Tenth and final race, Arkansas Bred Maidens at six furlongs. Late scratch of two, Bogey, a field of 11, went to the gate. Race time favorite, four, Buds, Mr. B. All in line. And runners away. Good start for Explosive Lake on the outside. Mostly Sunny is quick from the rail, and Mostly Sunny's on the engine, leading a length and a half early. From the pair of Explosive Lake and I Am, who race second and third, Buds, Mr. B, between horses. Down to the inside goes Mr. Ark, gently tapped, is in that top flight, about five lengths off the pace setters. Edgy's on his outside, the cap of three lengths to the team of Glacken's Ghost and Stormwell. They're spotted seven off the pace setters, and the two trailers here are Delta Chance and Gone Preaching. They take it to the far turn, the opening quarter, 21-4. and four. Very quick tempo being set by Mostly Sunny, who's trying to spring a shocker in the finale. Leads it by a length and a half, Explosive Lake is there second. Moving up now on the inside to take third is Mr. Ark under the whip ride. Next goes I Am. In between horses is Bud's Mr. B, followed by Gently Tapped, and they're at the top of the stretch. They better hurry up if they want to collar this long shot. Mostly Sunny still has the lead, but Explosive Lake is going two to his one now, and into the clear comes Bud's Mr. B through the final furlong. It's Explosive Lake who now takes the lead at seven to two and begins to draw away. Mostly Sunny, a bit green, shifting ground, trying to hold second. On the outside, Bud's Mr. B, Explosive Lake in the finale. Bud's Mr. B second, Mostly Sunny third. Glacken's Ghost ran on to be fourth. One ten and four for the six furlong. Fast tempo set by a big long shot in the Sunday finale, but Explosive Lake brings some reason to the result with an easy victory in the end under jockey Alex Conchari for K.K. Jayarman and V.D. Jayarman, K.K. Jayarman, the winning trainer. Second was the favorite, number four, Bud's Mr. B. Big bomber, mostly sunny, finished third. And fourth in the race was number eight, Glacken's Ghost. Well, that wraps up the Sunday program from Oaklawn Park. But remember to join us again on Wednesday evening as we will have Wednesday racing for the final week of the 2016 season. Also on Wednesday, the draw for the Arkansas Derby. That's right. It looks like a super impressive field lining up as 100 points to the winner towards the starting gate of the Kentucky Derby. You definitely want to join us each and every day next racing week here at Oaklawn Park. We hope you enjoyed your time with us this evening. We hope to see you again soon. Good night from Oaklawn Park.